Alright then gang, so now we can successfully get state from the store either directly or by using getters that we created. But at the moment we cannot change or update the state in the store. So in this lesson we're going to look at how we can do that. So in Pinya, if we want to update the state in a store we generally use specific functions called actions. And like getters, these actions live inside the store and package up any manipulation logic inside them. Then when we want to call those actions we can easily do so from any component. So first let's add a new property to the store called actions, which is an object. And then it's inside this object here that we can define our different actions. So what kind of actions do we actually need for the application? Well, first of all, we need an action to delete tasks whenever a user clicks on this trash icon. We also need an action to toggle whether a task is a favorite when this heart icon is clicked. And finally, I want to be able to add new tasks as well. And for that, we're going to need a simple web form at the top of the page so that a user can type in the new task and it can then be added to the state when they submit the form. So let's start by making an action that allows new tasks to be added to the state. Then we're going to look at these delete and favorite actions as well. So let's add a new action down here and I'm going to call it add task like so. Now this is a function and ultimately inside this function we want to add a new task object to this array right here in the state. Now in order to do that we need to take in some kind of value here as an argument or a parameter. So when we call this action from another component in the future we're going to pass in a task object and then inside this function we take that task object and we add it to this array. So in order to do this we can say this to access the state then dot tasks to get the tasks property then dot push to push on that new task. And that's pretty much it. So now we're able to call this action from another component. Now, where do we want to call that from? Well, what I want to do is create a new component, which is going to be a form. So I'm going to call this task form dot view. And inside this component, we are going to create some kind of web form. A user fills that in. And when they submit it, we call this action right here, add task and pass in the task we want to add to the tasks. So let's do that. So over here, I'll say VB and then an S. So the first thing we'll do is we will create the template up here. We're going to get rid of the div and replace it instead with a form. Now, we don't need the action right here. However, we do need a submit handler. So at submit and also dot prevent to prevent the default action of the page reloading when we submit the form. And then we set that equal to something. Now I'm going to create a function later called handle submit. So I'll just reference that here for now. Okay, so inside the form, we want an input field. And this is going to be a text input field. Now what I'm going to do is enter down here. So each attributes on its own line, like so. So the first attribute is type equals text, then a placeholder. And that placeholder is going to be I need to dot dot dot. And then we also want to use V hyphen model, and that's going to be equal to some kind of ref value so that when a user starts typing in here, that ref value is updated. Now we've not created that ref value down here, but we will do later. So let's just say here, new task. That's what we'll call the ref. And then after the import, we need a button, spell this correctly. And that's just going to say add. Okay. So that is the template pretty much done. Now down here, we need to, first of all, use the task store. So let's say const task store is equal to use task store. I'm going to click on this and it auto imports it right here at the top. Okay. So I also need to invoke that. And then after that, I want to create a ref, which is this thing right here, new task. So let's come down here and say const new task is equal to ref and then the initial value of this is just an empty string now just noticed all these errors and that's because i need to put all of this inside the setup function don't know what i'm doing there so create the setup function first of all then place these inside okay so we have the task store and now new task as well all right so now we need to create this handle submit function right here which is fired when the form is submit so Let's say const handle submit, set that equal to a function. Now inside this function, what do we want to do? Well, when a user is typing into this import, 
we're updating the value of the new task ref right here. So that's going to match whatever a user is typing. Now, we want to add that new task to the array over here, right? But if you look at this, each task is an object, not just a string, a title. So the title is what they're typing, but we need to create an object that we pass into this action down here. This one, add task. So inside here, first of all, I'm going to check, do we actually have a value? Is the length greater than zero of this new task? Because if we don't have a value, then we're not going to do anything. So let's say if new task and then dot value, we have to use the value property inside the setup function to get the value of this ref. And then we check the length. So dot length, and we see if that is over zero, because we only want to call the action if this is true. So then down here, I'm going to say task store, and we're going to call that action, which is add task like so. And we pass in the new task, which is remember an object. Now the object properties are going to be the title, which is the value of this new task. So new task dot value, new task dot value. And then also the is fave property, which is going to be false to begin with whenever we add a new task. And then finally, an ID property, which is unique. Now for this, I'm just going to use the math object. There are much better ways to do this, but for the sake of this tutorial to create some kind of random ID, I will be using the math property. So I say math.floor, and then inside this, I'll say math.random, and we times that by what 10,000. So 10, one, two, three. And what that does is basically get us a number between one and 10,000. Now there is the slimmest of chance that this is not going to be a unique number because it could come back with the same number twice. Very unlikely for this tutorial, but like I said, you're probably best off creating unique IDs using something else like a third party library. Anyway, now we have our new task object with those three properties and we're adding it to the task store over here, this thing, right? So we've done that. And after we've done this thing right here, what I'd like to do is basically reset the value of new task. And when we do that and we set it back to an empty string again, then it's going to update over here and this is going to be empty as well. So it's just easier for a user to type in a new task after that. So let's say down here, new task dot value is then equal to an empty string. Awesome. Okay, so finally, what we need to do is at the bottom of the setup function, return the values that we use up here in the template. So we use handle submit, and also we use new task. So return handle submit, and also new task like so. Awesome, so that is this template pretty much done, I think. So all we need to do is nest this component now inside the app.view file over here. So we're going to do that near the top. I'll come up here and do it above the filter. So let's do it below the heading. We'll say new task form. And then we'll do a nav. In fact, no, we don't want a nav. We want a div with a class of new task form like so. And inside that, all we want to do is output the task form, this thing right here. Now, when I clicked on that, it should have auto imported down here, but it's not done. So let me just import that. I'm going to copy this, highlight these and task form is what we want. And then down here as well, task form. Okay, so that's all registered. It's been nested right here. It's going to look like crap to begin with because we've not styled it, but let's try out the functionality. And just before we do that, I am getting an error in the browser saying ref is not defined. And that's because we're using ref right here, but we're not actually importing that. So let me just copy this import down here, import ref from view. This is how lazy I'm being right now. And then place it here, save it. And hopefully now this should work. All right, so now we can see this form. Let's try this out. Okay, so we'll say make some lunch, press enter or click add. And we can see it down here and let's say make the bed. Okay, sweet. So that's all working. If we go to fave tasks, this one is still the only favorite. Now, cool, that's working. This action is working. It looks terrible at the minute because we've not styled it. We'll do that shortly. But also what I'd like to do is make two more actions as well. I wanna make an action so we can delete items and also an action to toggle the favorites as well. So let's do both of those things as well as add some styles. 
All right, so let's do those other two actions first of all. So down here, we want an action to delete a task. And this is going to take in an argument, which will be the ID of the task we want to delete. And then also, before we fill that out, let's do another one called toggle fave. And again, this is going to take in the ID of the thing or the task that we want to toggle. So that's going to toggle between true and false over here. So let's do the delete one first. So I want to set this dot tasks equal to a new value because we're going to filter one of them out of it. So again, we'll say this dot tasks and use the filter method on it. So what we want to do is fire a function for each of the tasks and each time around take in that particular task. Now inside that function, we want to return either true or false. And we want to return true where the ID of this one is equal to the ID of this one. In fact, no, sorry. We want to return true if they don't match, because if they don't match, then we're keeping all of those tasks in the new array. Now, if they do match, we want to filter it out because that's the task we want to delete. So we will say return t.id is not equal to the ID. So if they're not equal, this is true and we keep that task in the array. If it is true, then this is false and we filter it out. So we're taking out that particular task. We're deleting it. Okay. So that's the delete task action done. The next thing I want to do is toggle the favorite. So first of all, what I'm going to do is say const task, and we're going to find the particular task using this ID that we want to toggle. So I'm going to say this dot tasks dot find, and we fire a function for each task and refer to each one as T. Then inside this function, I want to return the one where the ID of this is equal to the ID of that. So we're finding the task with that ID. So we'll say T dot ID is equal to the ID. And we're storing that particular task in here. Now then all I need to do is say task dot is fave is then equal to the reverse of what it currently is. So exclamation and then task dot is fave. And if it's true to begin with, then it's going to be false. If it's false to begin with, it's going to be true. So we're just toggling it pretty simple. And that's the two actions done. So now we can use these actions inside the task details component. So to begin with, we need to create a setup function down here. So setup like so. And inside here, we need to use the task store. So we'll say const task store is equal to use task store and press on that to import it. All right. And then after that, we need to invoke it as well. We need to return the task store. So we can use it in the template task store like so. Okay, so now inside the templates, if we click on this icon, we want to call this delete task action. If we click on this icon, we want to call the toggle fave action. So what we're going to do is add click events to each of these. I'll move these down onto a new line each time around like so. And after class, we will say at click and we set that equal to something and it's going to be task store dot delete task. Now we need to pass in the task ID. Remember we have access to the individual task as a prop. So we can say task dot ID. I'm going to copy this and then right here I'll do something similar for the favorite one. I'm going to paste it in and this time it's toggle fave, get rid of this, and we pass in the task ID again. So that's pretty much it. Now when we're clicking on these two icons, it should work, right? So I'm going to save this, but before we preview this in a browser, I'm just going to add a few styles, which I'm copying now from my repo. So I'm going to paste this in. This is for the form. So the new task form, a background of a very light gray, bit of padding, the form itself, width of 400 pixels, Margin auto left and right to set it in the middle, display grid, and we have some template columns as well. The gap is 10 pixels between those columns. Uh, the button, we colorize it, this yellow color. Strip out the border, give it some padding, font family of poppins, border radius, cursor, font size, etc. The border for the input is zero, padding 10 pixels, border radius of six, color is gray, and the font size 1M. So let's preview all this in a browser now. 
All right, so first of all, this looks nice at the top. I'm just gonna add a new one in to see if everything works. Have a nap, press enter, yeah, it works. So this is all the tasks and we can see we have four left. If we go to fave tasks, there's only one left. Now, if we go to all and if I click this heart right here, then it should become a favorite, right? If we go to fave tasks, we can now see that's a favorite. And if I click it again, it's no longer a favorite. Same with this. And now we have no favorites. Let's go to all tasks and add one on or two on again, go to fave tasks and they're back. Awesome. Now, if we want to delete one of these, for example, buy some milk, we click on that or this one, have a nap, click on that and they're gone. And if we go to fave tasks, we just have this one left. So that's all working. There is one more thing I want to do in this lesson, and that is just to colorize this heart icon. So if is fave is true, if it's a favorite, it should be red. If it's false, then we'll leave it gray. So the way we're going to do this is by going to task details over here. And we want to add a conditional class to this favorite icon right here. So to do that, we can say data bind to the class and we set that equal to something. Now, the thing that we set this equal to is going to be an object. And that object will basically be a list of classes and those classes will be true or false. If it's true, then it applies that class. If it's false, then it doesn't apply that class. So this is an object right here, this thing. So if we open up our curly braces and the property name will be the class name that we want to apply to it. So active and then the value is true or false. So task dot is fave. Now, if this is true and it's a favorite, then it will apply this active class to this icon. If it's false, then it won't apply this active class. So all we need to do is stylize this active class to colorize this thing red. So let me save this and head back to the main.css and up here where we style the filter, in fact, where we style the icon, we'll do it. I'm gonna paste in this rule. So task and then I with a class of active, we give it this red color. So now when it's a favorite, it should have that red color. All right, and over here we can see already this is red. Over here, if we go to faves, then we can see we have that. If we click on this, it becomes red and it's added to the favorites. If I click on this, it's taken away from the favorites and it goes gray. Awesome. So this is all working.